On today's episode of the BMW E28 overhaul, we get down to work on some brakes and suspension. Before we actually get to work on the brakes and suspension, I have here an ozone generator machine. So this is essentially a deodorizer for your interior. I didn't get to do this in the previous episode where we did the seats and whatnot, but I really wanted to show you guys this. I bought this on Amazon for about, I think, $67, which is super cheap because usually these are about $300. And uh, the whole point and premise of this is you put it in your interior, you plug it in, and you let it run for two, three hours, and it kind of like kills all the bacteria. It sucks all the air out, and which in turn is supposed to deodorize and neutralize everything. So this car does have that, you know, 80s-ish funky smell. So we'll see if this works. So let's hook this up and get it going. There it is. Got max time set. That smells already. Yeah, it smells. You don't want to uh, breathe that stuff in. All right. Makes you cough almost instantly. There we go. We'll close that up and we'll see what happens. So let's have a look at what my brakes look like. First off, I am thankful to say goodbye to these for a while. My trusty winter wheels, man, they do not look like they've been cleaned. So <laughs> I think it's I'm gonna the have, end of June. <laughs> I know, I'm gonna have to give these guys a good wash before I put them away. I feel bad. They definitely deserve a good cleanup job. So here is our brake setup. Doesn't this look good? And that's because these are brand new StopTech Sport Rotors and Centric Reman Calipers. And this is actually off of a E34 540i. I shouldn't say off of, but for an E34 540i. And the reason why I'm going to this upgrade is it's a bolt-on to the E28. And as you can see, the caliper, oops, the caliper is way larger. So, and way golder. Well, of course, it is zinc plated. It's got a lot more surface area in that sense. And the rotors, well, it's easy to see they're also bigger. But before I go bolting this on, I actually wanna strip the suspension because we have a set of custom Fortune Auto coilovers coming. They haven't arrived yet, they're coming tomorrow. So the plan of action here is to actually strip all four corners and get everything ready and prepped for the big brake upgrade and the Fortune Auto coilovers. Come on, come on coilover. There we are. I shouldn't have called that a coilover, this is anything but. Um, the current setup is some, I think these are Bavarian Auto lowering springs with top hats, Ooh, which were really good. Yeah, these helped get the suspension geometry in place. And the one thing that makes the E28 and I think E30 BMWs, a couple other of these 80s cars, difficult to put coilovers on is, as you can see, the spindle is built into the whole shock assembly. Uh, the other small little issue I ran into is I don't have, and I don't even know what size of nut that is, but that is a huge nut. Yeah, so I'm gonna go over to NV Auto. I'm hoping that they've got uh, a socket for that one so we can crack it loose. And now I think it's time to move on to the back. Let's see what we can find there. Well, in the rear, I wasn't expecting this. Check out the pad size that we're going to with the 540. Yeah, wow. I man, that's, that's kind of- big step up. Yeah, like the caliper this. <laughs> is the 528i caliper, or E, sorry, and this is the 540. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the dimensionally different on that. Yeah. The, and that it, bolts right up? That bolts right up, apparently it does. Yeah. I know, I feel kind of skeptical too, but I already checked the inner diameters of these and they're exactly the same. So I think we're okay on that. I should also note these are directional. They are also slotted, so they're gonna improve performance 
I don't know by how much in the rear here. Well, they're ventilated too, and the other ones weren't ventilated, so that's helpful. Yeah, so either way, they're gonna give us better brakes, which is ultimately the goal of what we're trying to achieve. And on top of that, I think these come out of the box without having to clean them. That's right, it says super uh, cool. ready to install. Yeah. So you don't have to, yeah, you don't have to clean them. It's Get impressive. the brake clean out and blast them. Yeah. I mean, so no chirp anyway, but uh, no chirping the internet. There's no chirping here. So pretty PT, so pretty. Oh, I know. Look at that. Fresh. That looks like a solid upgrade and everything did fit like the internet said. So I am happy with this. Next step here is to pull the spring and shock out. But uh, we're gonna cut to next day when we have our Fortune Auto coilovers and get ready to install it back in here. I spoke a little bit too soon about cutting to the next day. I was just about to drop that shock and spring combo in the rear and I realized, my goodness, it is so difficult to get at the, the bolts, or sorry, the nuts up here. There's actually a, an amp that I had to move out of the way and it looks like you're supposed to remove the rear seat to get it at the back nut, but I just ended up using a ratcheting wrench to remove that, so I'm gonna remove these two, and we should be good to go. On the other side, it is equally as bad. There's this whole, I think it's like a vapor tank for fuel, mm. so you can, and it doesn't even want, you can't take it off. There's like these actual the crimped on, crimped on yeah. yeah, clips on there, so, but you can kind of like weasel this out of the way and kind of reach around in the back here and do this, so. Not, needless to say, it's not a lot of fun, but we will get it done. Time for smell-o-vision, Pete. It smells pretty clean. Is it? Yeah, so this machine, you can kind of smell a little bit of the ozone. So mm -hmm. what you're supposed to do is, after you've run it, you leave the doors wide open, you let it clear out, and it's kind of as good as new. And, but realistically, like a lot of that old car smell is gone. So uh, to me, this machine works actually exceptionally well. I've tried it on a couple other cars and it's done its job. Look what the courier just dropped off, PT. Yes, these, they are here. These are your new 500 series Fortune Auto coilovers, specifically built for the E28 chassis. And you went with an 8K spring in the front and a 6K spring in the rear, which I think is a bit softer yeah, than their Yeah, I think the regular the ones are 10 and 8. Right. I wanted that plush. Cadillac style ride, you right? Know? And they would have valved it specifically for your spring choice, which is part of the beauty of buying from Fortunato is everything they build is custom spec, so they'll valve it to the spring rates you choose. So this is your uh, rear, and I know that because the fronts <laughs> are a max strut, and as you can see, the uh, there's no spindle on them, so you have to do the the job of adding the factory spindle onto this lower tube from Fortunato. As you can see, Pete's welded it on here. Yeah. And uh, lots of cleaning and prep work needs to be done to get a good weld done here. So this isn't something maybe everyone could do. I certainly couldn't do it myself. So I would be taking this to Enviato or a local welding shop to have this welded up properly. We know from experience that Fortunato makes really good stuff. This is their generation six system. And the big uh, magic sauce with generation six is some changes they've made to internal jetting and some orifice uh, machine work that gives it a 35% increase in damping adjustability range. So turning this knob to stiffen or soften the dampers now has 35% more range than the previous generation, which is what I have on my Celica, which makes me sad. Makes me want to send them back to Fortunato to get them rebuilt in generation six, which you can do with any of their stuff. It's all rebuildable. So. If I get jealous of the, the range of adjustability Pete has, I may send mine back in. Of course, something had to go wrong, and that was our shock does not want to come out of our assembly. So I had to rig up the old slide hammer here. Oh man, to get this thing out, and it is slowly coming out here. All right. Wow, indeed. A serious battle. There is our housing, and a long here, shock body, eh? Yeah, here's our shock. You can see it started to rust a bit, yeah. which is what triggered all of that. The other one actually came out surprisingly well. Next step here is to cut this whole strut tube to 
get the lower spindle off of it. And what we're looking to do is, I, I mean, there's really no instruction as to how to do this. Some people will leave about two inches of tube left. Some people will leave an inch. Yes. Nice. All right, there we go. I was gonna trip you for not using the bandsaw, but that actually worked exceptionally well. It does, well. it does. And anybody can do it at home. Man, my glasses are fogging up. We're not gonna complain how warm it is in here though. We are not, because winter is only six months away. As you can see, there is a layer of grime that I need to take off of here before we can get to welding, which means I get to use the parts cleaner and DP. How long have we had this thing for? Maybe two years? At least, yeah. yeah. And we've never used it. So finally it is coming into use. And let me tell you, it actually works really, really well. You wanna make sure you wear safety glasses and you've got some proper cleaning fluid in here, but. What I'm trying to do is expose as much metal in this entire area here so I can weld the coilover sleeve onto it. And the best way to do that is with my sanding bit here. Okay, so we now have the sleeve here ready to weld, as you can see, I've just taken enough material off of here so I can penetrate there cleanly and I've done it on the inside because I learned my lesson the hard way on another build. So now what we do is slide our Fortunato sleeve over and what you want is the orientation to be uh, parallel with the bottom of, I guess, the, the spindle. I've got my sleeve tacked up here and what I'm gonna do is Weld this area first as much as I can because you're not going to be able to go all the way around back on the other side. It's impossible to get in there. And then I'm going to make a second pass and just fill this whole area in. So that should be plenty strong when I'm done with. PT's welds are looking pretty good. So we got plenty of weld and penetration on there. What do you think? We're good. I mean, that's three passes on there. I went on the outside, on both outsides, and then one through the valley in the middle there. So I think that should be strong enough. Here is our other one that I quickly painted up. So it is ready for install. There you have it. We have ourselves a front coilover setup for the E28. Man, it looks really good. I'm super happy how this all turned out. So now it is time to bolt it in. It's a monumental moment here. Let's see if I can do this myself, DP. I got faith, Peter, I got faith. I gotta man that camera. All right. So, down below here, we are missing pretty much the rest of this lower suspension and it is right here. Oh, boy is it rotten. There are a lot of joints like this one here that have a ton of play. I mentioned earlier that I had some slop in the steering wheel and I think it was coming from this. But then I looked at some of these and they were the boots were ripped, so you know what? I just said, forget it. I got so much cash rolling out of my wallet that I splurged and bought every new arm for the suspension. And really, sometimes this is worth doing because now when I put this front end back together, it is gonna be as tight as it's ever been, as good as new, you could say. time for our brand new wheel bearing. 
which has a Koyo bearing made in Japan. Ooh, JDM on Fancy BMW. stuff, huh? Very fancy. Now, tapa, tapa, tapa. Let's get this thing on. Here is our StopTech Sport Rotor from an E34 540i. And it fits right up like a champ even clears our dust shields, which is great. <sighs> DP, I know we said we were gonna complain about the heat, but it's like a sauna in here. Can you see my skin? It's glistening. You're like moose spec right now. This, uh, this place has absolutely no airflow. So we it's are- It's probably 40 degrees Celsius with a humidex too. It's, it's around 40, yeah. That's like which 100 is like, Fahrenheit. Thereabouts, yeah, maybe more. Maybe more. It I don't know what my conversion looks like, but I can tell you whew, it's hot. Another small but important upgrade is we are ditching those 30 year old rubber brake lines and going with some stainless steel braided lines. We had these actually made up at Charles Jones. Our buddy Matt over there whipped them up and they're DOT spec and they're pressure tested, so they're fully street legal. So I think this will be the last item to wrap up here up front. Once we get this brake line on, let's test fit a wheel. It looks like we are good. Actually, we've got plenty of clearance, which is satisfying. And uh, these are my 16 by seven and 16 by eight and a half in the rear uh, Alpina wheels. And they are mounted up on Continental Contact Sport, con Extreme Contact Sport tires. Uh, 205, 55, 16 in the front and 205, 225, 50, 16 in the rears. Um, I've run these on a bunch of cars and have nothing but good things to say about them. They're a great street tire, so, uh, and they can handle mild track use, but for me, for the street, nothing beats these. They're good in the wet, good in the dry. They've got good uh, longevity in that sense. So overall a great tire and my wheel and package or my wheel and tire package looks fantastic here. So I think it is time to move on to the back. So compared to the front, the back Fortunato coilover install was super easy. Three bolts up top and one down here on the spindle. However, we have run into a slight issue and that unfortunately is the lowest point of droop. Yes. So uh, if you're looking to go really, really low, then the Fortunato coilover setup that they sent us is, which is the standard one, that's the way to go. Like this will tuck tire, you're gonna be as low as they come, but I'm not looking for that. So what we actually did is we called Fortune and they said, no problem, we're gonna send you a different, I think a whole shock a, and- a longer shock. Yeah, yeah, longer shock. And here we are, the Fortunato shocks have shown up and BMW's on the hoist. We finally have this thing working. I'm so excited to be breaking it in with this project. But let's have a quick peek at our new shocks. As you can see, they are definitely longer than the old ones. And that really is one of the beautiful parts of working and purchasing uh, coilovers from Fortune Auto is that they truly are customizable. In this situation, we said, hey, we don't wanna be as low as you guys provide. What can you do for us? And they said, no problem, bam, here you go. And the shock valving, of course, is set up for this vehicle. So it's a win-win. Now it's just a matter of transferring all these parts over onto these assemblies and mounting them up. Looks like Fortune got the new shock length just right. Look at that droop. The perfect amount for, as I like to call it, gentleman low. But I'm not exactly sure how low this actually is. So let's lower this car and see where it sits at the moment. Oh. Well. We've got about almost three fingers there. That is definitely too high for my liking, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. That means I have space to go lower, which was the opposite with the shorter shocks. So I think we're gonna call it on this episode because I still 
have a lot left to do in terms of getting the ride height set, but I wanna save that for the end of the series and the big reveal when this car is all done. So as always, thank you for watching. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications. If you're looking for gear, check out our speedacademy.shop website. And once again, thank you for watching. We really do appreciate it. So skanky, so fresh. Skanky, fresh. Skanky, fresh. Focus.